Hello and welcome to Transfermarkt TV. I'm Anufit, he is Stefan Bienkowski, and today's topic is Arsenal, um, the Premier League title contender. And the question here is, Stefan, for them to win the Premier League, do they need to go out and sign a center forward um, this January transfer window? It's an interesting question, one that our colleague Ben Littlemore asked um, in his article that's now on Transfermarkt, so please go read that. Um, we kind of wanted to build our video on this article and as quickly as we possibly can. Stefan, um, the scoring has been an issue. Gabriel Jesus, of course, uh, struggling with injuries, 10 games out this season already, um, doesn't have the biggest scoring rate um, in the world. I think the argument on the, that's is always in my mind. I think Arsenal do need a center forward because although I think Kapila Jesus believes a place in a center forward position, I just don't personally think he is a center forward. He's more kind of like, how do I say this? A winger who thinks he's a number nine, right? So, you know, I read this and I, I, I kind of tend to disagree with Ben a little bit. Uh, which is fine because, you know, we, we can have all of our different views. What do you think, though? Do Arsenal need a centre forward? Well, it's the 100 million euro question, isn't it, in January? Because literally. that's what's. <laughs> yeah, well, literally, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what some people are kind of hoping or expecting them to go out and spend on a new striker. And uh, they've obviously been linked heavily with uh, Tony at Brentford, uh, who's returning from his suspension. Um, and it's kind of been billed as the missing piece in Arsenal's kind of squad. Um, you know, you can look around the Premier League and you can kind of understand why Arsenal fans would be clamouring for a new striker. They look across the Manchester City who have Erling Haaland and Julian Alvarez scoring goals for fun. Liverpool aren't exactly struggling for goals. Uh, Mohamed Salah's obviously been back to his best and very recently in the two, in the clash between the two teams, Darwin Nunes kind of starred as well kind of showing maybe what Arsenal don't have. Um, and I, But then, of course, and as you said, you know, they've kind of got this kind of, you know, system which obviously worked very well last season, but it does kind of have its limits. And Gabriel Jesus perhaps sums that up really well. Um, you know, if you do look through his, um, you know, his track record in the Premier League, it's, it's certainly not bad. You know, you go through his time at Manchester City, his first season he had 0.7 goals per game. Uh, you know, and that kind of tended to kind of move up and forth between up and down, right, between like 0 0.25 and 0 0.45. And last season, he picked up a really respectable 0 0.42 um, goals per game. The issue, of course, with Jesus, and has always been the case with Jesus, is that he does pick up a lot of injuries. Uh, so, for example, this season, he's already missed 10 games through injury. Last year, he missed 17 games for Arsenal and Brazil. Uh, with a knee injury and so far this season you know he's not exactly been poor but he's also kind of struggled for game time and he struggled to prove to be a reliable player for Arsenal um, which is why and, and so that's why we're now in a position where and they've obviously got Eddie and Keita but um, he hasn't exactly been lining things up very well he's got five goals and 19 appearances mostly from the bench admittedly but I think you know Arsenal fans and probably Mikel Arteta himself have probably argued that um, he's maybe not of the quality where he can kind of hold down a starting position. So where do you go from here? You've got one striker who um, does score goals when he plays, but is often injured. You've got one player who's sitting on the bench ready to go, uh, but isn't exactly favoured to be a long-term solution there. So this is why Arsenal fans are looking for a new number nine. But in, as Ben makes in his argument, or the argument he makes in his uh, article is that Rather than looking for a new number nine, Arsenal may be quite well placed to actually look for some new wingers. Um, and, you know, it's a really interesting argument, Manu, because he's more or less stating that if you kind of look at Gabriel Martinelli, for example, uh, who's done perfectly well this season, um, but he's sitting on two goals and two assists uh, in the league, despite the fact that, um, you know, he's amassed a huge amount of crosses, he amassed a huge amount of shots. And, you know, if you look at his stats compared to last season, Ben makes a pretty fair argument that he's not really hitting the target, either that being the back of the net or his teammates in the opposing box, nearly as well as he should do. Um, and then if you kind of look to the opposing wing, sim a, a slightly different situation. And Bukayo Saka has got a very respectable six goals and seven assists in 19 league games. But the problem there is that he's more or less had to play just about every minute he's been available. 
And I think the argument, when I think it's a fair one really, is that you look at the other players in that team that can maybe step up and score goals and assists, and they certainly have done. You know, your Martin Odegaards, your Leandro Trossards, your Kai Havertz. These guys, even maybe Declan Rice to the extent, um, these guys can step up, but they do thrive in central positions. And, you know, if you kind of look at that Arsenal squad, they are very, very bare on wing positions. And I think that's probably why the likes of Martinelli and Saka are getting played over and over and over again. In one case, one continues to get played when he's not playing well. And in one case, he's maybe beginning to look a little jaded uh, and is struggling for form recently. And that's perhaps why our store struggling to score goals rather than the fact that they don't have a Tony or a Alvarez or a um, Mohamed Salah up front. Mm, yeah, and of course, um, they also brought back Marquinhos, right, from, um, I think he was in Lone and Nantes. Um, so he's, he's back, which is, is an indication that, um, you know, Mikel Arteta is maybe thinking along the same lines, that there is more depth required on, on the wing positions. Um, of course, you know, the question is, though, too, can you maybe play one of those central players on the wing? Um, Gabriel Jesus, for example, or maybe even Kai Harvards. I think Harvards maybe lacks the pace that is required um, to play uh, on that position. But it's an, it's an interesting argument to be made. One thing that Ben points out in his article is the role that Roberto Firmino had, right, at Liverpool when they did win the title. I mean, Roberto Firmino is available at the moment. <laughs> He's... Uh, He's reportedly wanting out out of Saudi, um, you know, Premier League or back to Brazil is sort of what I'm hearing is his preferred destination. I mean, would it be crazy to link those two? It seems almost to make more sense than maybe Ivan Tony or um, I saw Brobby from Ajax has been linked. Uh, Dominic Solanke is another one who has seen been linked, a name that I haven't heard in a long time. You know, if you were looking for that dynamic forward who can accentuate your wingers, there's a player available right there. Yeah, uh, it would be quite something. Um, I'm not entirely sure it would um, satisfy the demands of Arsenal fans. It's maybe more of a kind of plaster over uh, a, a gushing wound, really, rather than a long-term solution. But I think it's probably more than likely that Arsenal will keep their eye on things at the end of this, until the end of the transfer window. Rather than go down splashing a huge amount of money on someone like Tony, they might wait and see if they can wheel and deal some sort of deal, uh, you know, as obviously as the window comes draws to close. For me, there's one example. There's Borja Mayoral, the Getafe striker, who 26-year-old uh, player who we value at 15 million euros. is maybe something of a stopgap, if you will. You know, a player can come in, offer some sort of, um, uh, some sort, not so much cover, but maybe bolster that team. Um, there's Joshua Xerxes as well, who's the young Dutch Bologna striker, who was, of course, at Bayern Munich once upon a time. Uh, of course, he would probably be, he'd edge, edge closer to a marquee signing, I would say. Um, but he's obviously one who can play across that line uh, and might be able to solve a few of their problems as well. But we'll just kind of have to wait and see. I think that I think the thing we could all agree on is that it's not a simple solution. Uh, and it's obviously because Arsenal are you know, arguably ahead of maybe where they thought they would be at this stage uh, in their kind of rebuild process, it means they've got this additional pressure on them to kind of, you know, they're almost like that old cartoon of some of the train trying to, trying to lay the track as the train runs over. Uh, that seems kind of seems to be how Mikel Arteta is trying to build the squad right now because they're almost a victim of their own success. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see if they do bring someone in in January or if they're going to have to stick with Jesus, Martinelli and Saka until the end of the season. Yeah, I am actually working on a six article as we speak, so stay tuned for that. You can follow all the other Arsenal transfer rumors on Transfermarkt in the rumor mill. Go check it out. You can discuss all the various rumors this as well if that's something that you like to do. Um, so check out Transfermarkt, um, whether that's .co.uk, .us, .com, uh, whichever region you're coming to visit us from, there's something for you. We'll be back soon with more content. Until then, cheers and bye-bye.